upon when it was a business transaction that actually took away earthwork from my son's life. And that has fueled me to do some extraordinary things, but I had so much anger in me. Being the way that I grew up, I didn't want to be a father. And to fail at the first hurdle, oh, that ain't my soul. And I had so much anger bent up in me from so many scenarios that was unprocessed. And now, with the help of proper and wonderful personal development, I work along with that anger. So people come towards me, not away from me. Mm. If I choose to smile. And you don't, betray, you don't betray that sense that they can sense as they're walking past you of that anger. If you walk past me, you aren't going to feel better about you because I'm smiling at you. And I'm always saying, warning, <laughs> hello, this puppy will go, go with me anyway. It's going to take a, <laughs> whatever time you're Take like, a bit oh, longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want to share a really important part of this because it's something that still hurts me today and still creates issues for me. I haven't talked about this before and I'm, I'll deal with whatever comes up. After my wife's accident, so bilateral fractures in the skull, two bleeds on the brain, there's a, there's a fair bit of damage. And she didn't have a safe place to work through things. And it was not so for me. She lost everything and had to go again. And I went to the doctors because we finally got her to understand that there's a lot of frustration coming through and it's just because of the head injury because she can't compute things right and she's a beautiful human but she's got so many amazing things going on i'm sitting there with the doctor my son was four and a half years old so it's a couple of years later and i've gone ever since it took us so long to get her to the point to say hey i need help with this it's the hardest thing to do is put your hand up and ask for help Sitting in the doctor's surgery, he goes, what are you here for? So I'd like to go on a mental health plan here for my wife because she needs support. And without any questions, he turned and said, I know your wife, she's fine. What I feel so good at walking and not having a feeling. I said, thank you, mate. Thank you. And that day forward, the doctor made himself more important than the family was sitting in front of me. Well, maybe I've got a safe place to land. So I'll be curious about what's actually going on. Without our judgment, I just wanted to understand. If I don't, it creates so much pain. And how many people are out there? going through the same sort of pain or similar to what you've gone through and obviously still are. It's so hard to find some way to finally open up to and to trust. I promise you you're worth it. I promise you the people in your life are worth it. Whatever you're going through right now, you're important enough to talk about it. You've just got to find someone. You know, like we run the campfire project where we have big conversations. I run the business of smiles where I literally walk the streets seeing people. Because we're that important. And maybe it's because I am. Yeah. You're an important part of the process for other people to to heal. Yeah. To heal. No and, importance of it. And feel worthy. Yeah. So you go and you help people feel worthy for who they are and not be insignificant in this life. I've never met anybody who hasn't added value to my life. There you go. Right? Now, yeah, I've been into some dark places. I've been into some places that people don't want to go. I've also been sat with CEOs 
not under so much pressure because of the constant decision making that they've forgotten about their family and they're in so much pain that it's not funny. Mm. And that's the pain that's going to, they're going to sit with at the end of life. They're the regrets that they're going to hold on where they're at because they haven't had anywhere safe to process it, so they avoid it, which makes their hole in their heart deeper. And their anxiety and their stress. So and, well. so and you numb it. Yeah, you numb it, but you can only numb it for a certain period of time before your body decides to tell you that it's enough. People are amazing. Our body is an amazing piece of machinery, and I always say that. But it comes to a, a time when it has to say, I've had enough. I need help, or they have a heart attack, or something happens, yeah. unless they find someone like you. And yeah. Pop's here. Yeah. The, the, the body is a barometer to the soul. What we're feeling inside, we're expressing outwardly. It's an indicator. Oh. So we can see in people's body language, the way they're moving, that there's stuff going on. But we don't know what it is. You know, it's sitting there and being able to listen to them and give them that safe place so they can feel that they can speak out. We've just seen an example with Scott here on radio with all your listeners and everything else. He's come a long way with from where I first met him with being able to share these stories. Yes, he's going to feel that emotion. It's something that, okay, we talked about it, we're over it. It's going to be with us. Last Friday and again today here on Monday in Newcastle, I've been privileged that two people that um, I'd worked with in the past, one 12 years ago and the other one eight years ago, who have come in, sit down with a videographer and just shared their story of what they went through and what they understood and everything else. You know, one gentleman who had uh, PTSD, he saw all the carnage on the railways. That was his job, was to go out and invest, investigate suicides and also um, uh, derailments where people have, you know, large uh, carnage and, and that all affected him. But as he said, he'd been to psychologists, he'd been to psychiatrists and had no results. And then he finally, they let him come to me. And in a short period of time, simply because I was able to sit there and hold his space with him and ask him, not we're not going to look at the problems that you have, but outside of you, what is it that you need and who do you need to connect with? And he said, well, I'm having trouble connecting with other people. So we focused on him being able to learn how to read the other people. And as he did that, he understood himself. We took the neon light off him. And so he was able to sit there and express himself, feeling that there was no judgment. That's the whole thing that when you feel there's no judgment, you can speak more freely and it comes out. And when you're able to share it with somebody who can listen, they don't have to give you answers. They just have to have shown that they've been, they've seen you, they've heard you, that their eyes and ears were there on you, for you, without judgment. And people turn around and go, my God, that's had such an impact on me. You know, and that's they very, say, it's a best. Very, hmm. Sorry. Yeah, they'll say that it's the best um, uh, therapy they've ever had. And as I always say to them, well, if you want to thank the therapist, they go, yes. I said, well, get off the call, go and look in the mirror and say thank you because it was you. You were finally listening to your unconscious mind speaking to you. And I've done nothing but hold that uh, space for them, facilitate it so that they could do the work that they needed to do. That's what most people think, that they're going to go off to a therapist and the therapist is going to fix them. And that's why they never get fixed. Mm. They say, I'm not even hey, going there. Yeah, if I mm. sit down and somebody just hears me, that's therapy in itself. And the person finds their own way through. I think, I think the really important part now is to go through it, not to the mm. sideways. Like it's like just then, I, I put my heart on the table here. Yeah, well, I did. And, and it wasn't, wasn't from fear, it was from love. And I knew I could. But the most important thing was, Emotions came up, but I did not squash them. Because otherwise, if you keep squashing them, they'll burst. Mm. Mm. If it comes up, feel it, embrace it, own it. Mm. Um, but a lot of people can't do that. They'll, they'll share their story and they'll suppress it, and it still stays suppressed until they find the environment mm. that is comfortable enough for them and that, to allow them to express themselves and it's a very powerful thing to be able to sit in a place and allow someone to share their story 
without saying anything, without doing anything, and then getting them to realize that they're healing themselves because mm. you've given them the opportunity yeah. to do that. Because oh, I don't even want to go to psychologists and psychiatrists and all those people. Um, I'm not even going there because I'll get myself in trouble. Um, and just looking at allowing someone to, to have a space to talk because a lot of the time we don't find those spaces to talk for someone to listen to mm. us. And, yeah, and there are a lot of people out there hurting, hurting right now. It also takes time to practice these things. Like one of the things in the, in, in the paid side of things that I do, it's, it's always, it's 12 months because it's not about just getting it out. It's about processing and learning to have conversations around it and also allowing others to sit in a conversation so you can actually be a lot stronger in yourself when it comes to other situations. There's a, I've got, a, I've got a, an amazing client at the moment who I just, uh, they're amazing. And one of the things we identified was the environment. The environment's everything, right? So, and it's about creating the environment for them to be safe. Now, their core part of their environment is the kitchen. It's their hub. Mm -hmm. And once we understood that part of them, we understand that that part of the house always has to be kept in order. That's the safe zone. That's the place where, and when she, sorry, it's when they are strong enough as to allow somebody into that space. Because that's that's theirs, that's their comfort zone, and that's own that space. It's yours. It's it's you know, and, and that's the thing we're working towards. And it takes time. And mm. I, I, there's no way known you can spend one hour with somebody and know everything about it. We've spent two, and we haven't even scratched the surface. I know. I, I still, yeah, tell me about tell me about you. I haven't shared much about me at all. It's been about the conversation mm. because it's about sitting and listening and understanding each other. We could sit here for another 10 hours comfortably mm. and still not scratch the surface because yep. we're just investigating each other. We're understanding. We're talking about things that are important to us because mm. they are important. Very important. And that's why you, you guys are here today. Mm. It's very important to share mm. what you do mm. yeah. and so that the listeners mm. can feel comfortable to connect and that's what it's all about is that connection if they need that then they can come to you and connect yeah. uh, and, and you never know who you need you know who's going to be able to help you and that as you said before we won't talk about psychologists or psychiatrists it's like every field uh -huh. we've got some really great ones we've got some really poor ones no matter what field we go into at the end of the day as i said to I want to learn from people when I talk to them. As I said, I, I want to learn you. So I've got to find out about them so I can then help them. So I'm always listening and, and taking things in. My whole life, and Scott's as well, it's been about the experiences that we've had. So we come from that place of not just technically what we've learned, but all the emotional things that we've been through as well. So we come with technical knowledge, but we also come with experiences. And as they say, technical knowledge on its own is useless. It's just like having a book sitting on the shelf. It's when it's applied and you, to apply it, that's when you get the experience and that's where wisdom comes from. And mm. so it's having the wisdom of just knowing when to talk and when not to talk, just be able to be there for somebody, hold that space and allow them to find their way. And in doing that, anybody can do that. And I know some brilliant psychologists and psychiatrists out there who do that. And I find a lot of people who aren't in those fields at all who do it brilliantly as well. Mm. Always ask if you're talking to somebody, Ask them their experience. Ask them, them to share your, your, their story so that then you feel safe enough to share your story with them. Beautiful. Scott's been now, interviewed in the group. I've been interviewed in the group. We're not going to ask anybody to share anything with us unless we've shared with them first. Okay. We're going to tie it up now. So, Scott, how can they get in contact with you? www.ihopeyouasmiling.com I hope you are smiling. Remember that. Pops? Alan? Okay, the Campfire Project is thecampfireproject.com.au. And if they want to know more about the work that I do with reading people, it's Alan Stevens, A L A N S T E V E N S, 
Beautiful.